Hi guys, it is officially Inktober. I love Inktober time. I love working with inks and I love working on a big Inktober project. So today I'm gonna to work on the cover for my Inktober book. And while I do that, I'm gonna talk about some tips and tricks with creating an ink illustration. So basically starting with the line work all the way to ink washes, just things that I've learned over years of working with these mediums, things that have made my life a lot easier since I figured them out. Just really quickly, the mediums that I'm using, if you're interested, I'm using Micron pens. Those have been my tried and true pens for years and years. I, I love them. They are waterproof for me. I know some people have struggled with that, but I've never had an issue of smudging after they've dried and being able to apply, whether it's watercolors or ink washes. So they're, they're pretty solid and reliable. The paper that I'm using is hot press arches paper. I love this a lot for my Inktober projects because it's a watercolor paper, so it takes the ink washes perfectly, but because it's smooth, it's a hot press paper, it allows me to also do the line work and the inking side of this illustration a lot easier than if I was working on traditional textured watercolor paper. Oh, and really quickly, I am actually launching the Kickstarter for my Inktober project, which is an art book titled Memento Mori. I am so proud of what I have done for it so far. I've loved working on it. It launches next Tuesday. So that is October 12th. I'm, I'm just so pleased to be able to work on a new art book since it's been a couple of years since then. And if you'd like updates on that, I do have a newsletter at my website. So if you'd like to sign up for that, I'll have a link down in my description that'll take you over there. And I'll also be putting notices up everywhere when I do release it, but that is going to be on Tuesday, October 12th. My first tip is to use a sheet of glassine or wax paper under your hand instead of a normal scratch piece of paper, which is what I used to use. I used to use just like a copy paper or a spare sketch paper. But the problem with that is that it still has a lot of friction against your hand. When you use something like glassine or wax paper, which is really very smooth, it actually allows your hand to glide really easily over the paper and it goes with your hand. This was completely game changing for me. I was able to get much smoother, more graceful, long curving lines and things went faster. So I highly recommend it. And glassine is actually super cheap. When I'm working on a much longer line or really complicated shape with a line, I like to ghost over that shape first. And this allows me to make sure that where I have the paper positioned compared to my hand, that it all lines up with the range of motion that my hand will naturally take. So if I'm working on a line and I'm naturally going against where my hand wants to curve, then it's going to be more of a struggle. It'll be harder to make sure that it fits the sketch that I want and it's going to be bumpier. But if I can just turn my paper and follow that natural line of motion that my hand does have, then it's gonna be a lot smoother. So I do recommend that doing little test runs to check what is the perfect angle to get that specific line. The order of how you work on your piece and where you're working on it actually makes a big difference. Personally, I like to start with faces and anything else that's really detailed and complex and could throw the piece off if it's not exactly perfect. So I like to get those done and out of the way so I can move on to the rest of the piece and breathe a little bit easier. And then after that, I like to work in the order of things that are closest to the camera and then as they get farther and farther away. The reason that I like to do that is because say, for instance, that skeletal hand, if I drew the character's arm behind it first and I overlapped just a little bit where that finger needed to be, it would be much harder to ink that hand correctly than it would be to do the hand where maybe it overlapped a little bit more over her arm. I could do the hand first and then the arm and the layering just makes so much more sense. So I like to do it that way where I'll do that first and then the object behind it, and then the object behind that. I also make sure that I do all the really skinny shapes first, like the little strands of hair, because if I inked all the other lines carefully right up to the point where that line needed to go, and then I tried to get this perfect arcing line that's really fine and narrow, and I had to do it twice, it would be a lot more difficult than if I was able to just draw that line, even if it goes off the sketch path a little bit and then adapt the rest of the sketch around it. That is so much easier. I like to build up the line way underneath objects so that it almost implies a shadow. It just reinforces where I do put the shadow shapes and it gives it a little bit more weight and heaviness to that. I also like to make things as they recede into the background thinner in line weights so that things that are closer have thicker lines and then as they get farther away, it helps reinforce the dimensionality of the space that everything's in. 
I also really like to leave off the really heavy line weights until I'm much farther into the piece. That way it reserves it for certain areas that needs it the most. And then I can specifically put those in rather than accidentally starting off with a much thicker line weight. And then by the time I get to the end, I can't use that line weight to emphasize certain areas. This is more of a stylistic thing, but I really like to go in with a thicker line weight around different objects within a piece to help differentiate them from, from the other elements in the piece. And I think it's really graphic and I like it. So I actually went in with a thicker line weight around the woman character to help her stand out a little bit more from the skeletal Grim Reaper character behind her. And then I did that with the skeleton hand so that it was a bit thicker than the character that it was overlapping so that things just kind of bounce off a little bit more than, than they would if they were all the same line weight. I highly recommend that you have lots of scratch pieces of paper around you in the specific paper that you're using for your final pieces. I use them so much. I use them to make sure that my pens are still just as inked as I need them, that they're not drying out. I also like to use them to test out new textures or make sure that the right line thickness for the application that I need. And then for ink washes, of course, I use them all the time to make sure that the mixture that I have is correct. Because when you're working with an ink wash, it's just black ink in water. So there's no way to actually tell how, how dark it really is because it tends to all just look black in the wells. So you really need to put it down on paper, see how it dries to see what the actual value is going to be. So I have so many of those little scrap pieces of paper around me that I'm constantly reaching for. For the ink washes, I'm actually just using a bottle of India ink. It works really perfectly with creating ink washes and then these really textural elements that I, I love doing, especially for the background. So I like to have a well in my little palette that has just clear water and then another well that either has the pure ink in it or a really dark, dark wash with just a little bit of the water mixed in. And then when I'm creating these, even when they're mid-tone textural areas, like the background on this piece, I like to go in with that really dark ink that's on top of a wet on wet paint or wash already. And then I can go in with the clear water and drip it on top of that really condensed ink. And then I'll usually alternate that a couple of times and that creates this really textured look that I love. So ultimately I think really the, the tip is to experiment a lot with the ink textures that you can achieve. They really add a lot of life to a black and white piece. I, I love this time to really see what the inks will do and see how they add to the piece. But on the flip side, creating really smooth washes is a little bit more of a struggle with the mediums that I like to use. So the hot press paper is actually kind of always a bit of a, a struggle to make really smooth washes happen, whether it's with inks or watercolors. I found that the real trick for me is to use a lot more of that ink wash than I think I should have. So I'll really load up my brush and make sure that there's plenty on there and then working with a very, very wet puddle that I'm spreading out to create that wash actually allows it to, to let the pigments really disperse over that wet area. I find that it creates a much smoother wash than if I was going in with a more dry brush and then trying to spread it out from there. That has made a huge difference was just to experiment with how much I was actually putting down with my brush and that allowed me to get much smoother results. And I actually really love that effect of having really textured elements next to much smoother elements. It helps the differences of each to really stand out and it helps put contrast into certain elements that you might want to have really stand out from the rest. When I'm creating a glowy effect, like around a moon or in this piece specifically around that death's head moth that's in the Grim Reaper's hood, I like to go in with just clear water right around that element to create a buffer as I'm painting around it with that ink wash. So with this hood, I put that clear water around the moth and then I will paint from the edge of that water with a lighter ink wash than I have for the rest of it. And then I'll just build it up so that it does fade out as you get farther and farther away. And because I started with a buffer of just that clear water, a little bit of the ink will leach into that area, but it'll keep it a lot lighter than, than all the areas around it. 
One of the absolute most satisfying things about this process is going back in with the inks to clean up the edges of the ink washes that I've already done. I love this step so much. It's just so pleasant to watch those rough edges become really sharp and clean again like they were at the beginning. So I just look for areas where the wash didn't quite meet up with the line or there's just a little bit of roughness to it, which just happens when you're working with something traditional like this. And I just go back in and I'll, I'll usually create a little bit of a thicker line width around those shapes so that it just conceals that completely and it just immediately makes it a higher level of sharpness and cleanliness and I love that look. And this is more of an emotional tip, but I find that when I'm working on the inking step, it's so easy to get caught up in a really perfectionist kind of mindset. It's really frustrating to put a line down that isn't quite right, or maybe I messed up the line weight and it just wasn't what I had pictured. There are a lot of areas that as I'm working in the ink washes will be completely camouflaged. Either you won't even notice it anymore, or once I add in the shadow, that line weight will make sense. There's so many times like that where I've just really gotten so frustrated about certain details not quite coming together in just the inking phase. And when I look at the inked piece, I can see those clearly, but then once I add in those values, once I move the piece on to the next step, they just, again, they completely disappear. So I find that it's really helpful for me to remind myself that it doesn't have to be perfect in the line art stage. There are so many opportunities for me to shift things and change things and enhance things and hide things as I'm working on each step in the process. And this is a little more of a side note on that, but I know that it's just so easy to get really frustrated with things not being perfect. And I, I'm not someone who's actually conquered that, but I've gotten a lot better at excitedly embracing what working traditionally means with working with line work that isn't digital. It means that while everything's not going to be perfect, it does also have a different quality to it. Something that's a little bit more hand done. It has more of my own self in it, I guess. Really, it's just, it's helpful to be able to remember that there's there's value in creating artwork that's going to be what it is and seeing where that ends up. And don't forget the Kickstarter for my Inktober art book, Memento Mori, is launching October 12th, and that's next Tuesday. I love this project. I've loved working on it so much. So I can't wait to show you guys more of the content that's going into it. And this book is actually going to be in full color. I'm doing everything traditionally first and then I'm digitally adding color, which I have done in the past and I love that process. So, so yes, this is going to be my first full color book, which I am super excited about. There's going to be lots of other other art extras that are going to be part of this Kickstarter too. So if you'd like to stay in the loop with when that does launch, then I'll have a link to my website down below and you can go check out my newsletter. You can sign up for it and I will send out uh, an update on when it actually launches. But again, that's going to be October 12th. That's Tuesday. And I am really excited about it. 